Hey everybody, it's me, Mia Fran again. Welcome back to my channel and to another A3 review for the fall or autumn and winter troops, rather. And we are on episode four, technically. Uh, so this is what? Episode 17? Something like that? I think. I don't remember. It's episode four. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Um... Uh, what was this one called? Oh, become a different person. Something like that. Yeah. Something like I want to be accurate. Become someone different. That's what it's called. This was a great episode. Really liked it. I like this part of the story in the game because now we finally get to see Jesus' portrait, and it was amazing. It was good. It was so very good. I cried. Uh, before I get into details about that, um, basically, in this episode, we had uh, five of them practicing their portraits, like, in front of Yuzo. That's his name. I remembered it when they said it in this episode. So that's his name. Remember, we forgot it last time. Well, did we rem remember now. And uh, Izumi are, like you know, kind of, like, gauging their progress. And they both decide that, um, Juza's was the best. Sakyo and Omi are, like, tied. Uh, Taichi's, like, fourth place, and then Bandri is last, and so, of course, he gets mad. Because they can tell that he bullshitted his fucking speech. Like, they're like, that didn't really happen to you, did it? Like, we can just tell. And he's like, what do you mean? It was legit. But like you, even we, like even you as like the person, people watching in the audience, it's like, dude, yeah, that sounds so fake. Yeah, I was like cringing the whole time. I know that's like a word that nobody really likes to use anymore. Cause it's like. Cause saying cringe is actual cringe. Yeah. I don't think it is, but. But for the sake of this, like it really was like, I couldn't watch it. Secondhand embarrassment. Basically, because you know he's bullshitting it. So just to see him, like, again, bullshit his way through, or at least try to, even though he didn't fool anybody, didn't work out for him. Bit him in the ass for thinking so high and mighty of himself. Right. And so he gets kind of mad because he's like, how can I lose? Like... We all know I'm the best in rehearsals, even though he's like, like he's good, but he's not like improving. He's at the same, he's like staying at the same level because he's just like so obsessed with just being better than Juza. Like it's really impacting like his, his overall improvement, which there is none right now. And like, we know he doesn't take it seriously because he's just going to like run away from his problems and just keep saying like, Oh no, I already know I'm better than him, like... Like, you got- we don't have to actually, like, judge. But it's like, no, we do, because... You're not actually learning from practicing. He's doing the bare minimum. Yeah, this part annoyed me so much in the story with Manri. I was just like, dude, just chill the fuck out, man. Like, you're- <sighs> I just don't like that how he's, like, thinking he's better than everybody, when clearly... He ain't. Especially if he's gonna bullshit his way through. Right. And he's trying to run away from it. Like, he's boys chickening out at the last minute. Right, like he decides, you know what, I'm just gonna quit. Oh, I'm better than everybody. I don't need to be told that I won, because I already know I did. Like, we can all so clearly- annoying. we can all clearly see that I'm the best here, so, like, we don't have to confirm it, because it's already tr the truth. Even though everyone else is saying, like, No, this person- like, like, no, Juza is- is- is the best so far. That doesn't mean he's, like, the best actor or anything, it just means, like, His, uh, practicing and, you know, everything is, like, really paying off in terms of, like, They're getting the emotion from his the most. Yeah. Like, 
I don't know. In certain situations, I think you can say, oh, this person's better than this person when it comes to acting, but like, everybody gives it their all. I've liked all of the speeches that we've seen so far, so. But in terms of like, who has a sh the shittiest attitude, it's definitely Bodley. At the moment, yeah, which I mean, he does turn around at the end, but more now, like half this episode. I just, I was so annoyed, so annoyed. <laughs> Right, so instead of, like, actually, like, improving, he just kind of decides, like, okay, well, I'm gonna run away, because clearly you guys are not on my same level of knowing that I'm the best. But even Juzo's like, dude, I haven't even, I haven't actually even won yet, like, what are you talking about? We should, like, you know, compete fair and square. <laughs> But Bunley's just like having none of it, so he just leaves. And Sakio basically tells him, like, alright, then dude, get the fuck out and don't come back. Don't show your face again. He's not gonna have any of this shit, basically. Yeah, Sakio, I. Sakio is like such a mood. He is. He's such a dad. <laughs> He's the dad, and then of course they call Omi the mom. Which I love. Um, but then uh, Izumi like goes to find Bandai and is like, I think you should come watch everybody's portraits. Because they haven't seen each other practice. Like even when they were practicing in front of the in front of Izumi and um, Yuzo, like it was just individually. Yeah. They, so they don't know still, like, yeah, they individual. don't know yeah, they don't know what each other has been practicing. Or why they placed Right. Certain ways. So, so we finally get to see. We saw. Well, we've already seen Sakio's and Omi's. We saw a little bit of Taichi's. He talks about like this girl who used to like live next door to him, or the, who he lived next lived next door to. And his biggest regret was like never telling her how he felt. We'll get into that later on. <laughs> Cause um, Taichi's portrait, we they can't reveal just yet. Yeah, it's. It's interesting. Um, but we finally get Juzas. And, oh man. There's a lot behind, like, why he is the way he is. Why he's such a loner? Yeah. So basically, he's just, he basically, like, he has resting bitch face, but it's not resting bitch face. It's more like resting scary face. <laughs> I guess he just looks really intimidating and scary to people, even though, like, that's not his intention. He's like, I wanted to just be like everybody else, you know, I would, like, try to, you know, play with the other kids and stuff growing up, but every time I would try to, like, reach out and say, like, oh, hey, like, I want to play, like, he would scare everybody off. Like, nobody would, like, stay long enough to, like, get to know him. Because he's just so it's scary just looking, I know. And that's how he kind of earned this, like, delinquent reputation because everybody's just like, oh, he looks scary. I bet he could beat me up. And so, like, he kind of falls into that, like, label too just because he's like, well, then people started trying to, like, mess with me. So I have to, like, fight back. So he, like, had no choice but to, like, you know, get and into this fights all and stuff. He was in elementary. Yeah. Like even as like a little kid, just <laughs> like even sadder, man. Like just I a know. little tiny kid, like no bully the baby boy. <laughs> I know. Like he's just a sweet laid back guy, and he, you know, he can't really like show anybody that because everybody's all scared of him. So then, like when he's in middle school, he says that like for their class, they're gonna do a play for like the school festival, and he's like, oh, okay, finally, like. You know, because, like, as he's growing up, he wants to basically become a different person because he's like, well, I want to be someone that's not scary. Like, I want I want people to see me as, like, something else. So that's why he wants to become an actor because, you know, when you're acting on stage, you're not playing yourself. You're playing somebody else. And people will believe you when, you know, you, you act like... You know, a, a different person with a, a completely different personality or whatever. 
so their middle his middle school class gets a chance to do a they they pick to do a play for the school festival and he's like i was so excited when the teacher asked like you know or told us that we were gonna do it i immediately like raised my hand to like volunteer to act but as soon as i did that the teacher automatically was like oh you would be really good backstage and he's like I couldn't believe like they were saying that the teacher was saying this but then everyone around me like looks at me expectantly so like I have to agree to what they think I'm gonna say so he couldn't be on the stage because he even intimidated all the teachers too so like he was kind of stuck so he's like and that was you know that was the one chance that I could have taken to become someone else and I, I didn't because he says something like, I had my hand halfway up in the air and I I decided to put it down when I shouldn't have. Which is sad. I know. <laughs> it's very sad. And then he talks about, but then I went to go see my cousin, Muku. He revealed that Muku's his cousin. I mean, at least to this audience. I don't think anybody in the other troops are there, so they still don't know that they're cousins, but... He's like, I, I went to go see my cousin who's completely the opposite of me. He's very, like, soft-spoken and, um, you know, very quiet and, like, you know, keeps himself as well, but in a different way. And that was he wasn't like that on stage. Like, I could tell he was having fun. He had, like, a stage presence. Like, he t got everybody's attention. And, you know, they really liked his performance. And he's like, and, and I, like... Uh, he, he's like, I really wanted to be up there, too. He's like, why why am I sitting here in the audience? I should also be up there on the stage. Because he was both proud and jealous that Muku could, like, do that. So that's also what kind of, like, pushed him to just, like, go for it. And that's when I started crying. <laughs> because, and Chantal, like, you predicted that I was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw like how Jesus' portrait was going on and I was like, oh yeah, she's gonna be crying. And then it was crying. <laughs> okay, so yeah, like basically I started crying during this part because I can totally relate. So when I was like growing up, I was like really shy. I hated singing in front of people because I thought I had a bad voice and it was just embarrassing. I did not like talking in front of people like, you know, making speeches and stuff. Um, all I did was dance because you don't have to talk and like I was good at that at dancing so like I, I was used to being on the stage just like not saying anything or singing or learning lines or whatever and so my brother shouts out to Skylar um, so when he was in like second or third grade so I was in like fourth grade I guess um, our school did, like, a play, and they had auditions and stuff, and, like, I didn't audition, obviously, but my brother did, and he got, like, one of the leads, and I remember, like, being really jealous that he got, to, like, that he was doing it, because I'm like, well, I kind of want to do that, too, and then when I actually saw the play, I was like, I was just like Juza, I was like, why the fuck am I in the audience? Like, why am I not on stage, too? Like, I could do that. Like, I could have people's attention and, like do really well because I was like really happy and proud that my brother was up there on stage but I was also really jealous so I was like god damn it this fucking show is like bringing out all these fucking past emotions in me um so that was when you know like years later a few years later when I was like you know what fuck it I'm gonna audition for this play and if I don't get in it's fine but I got in so that's good and then, like, you know, I could become different people. I was able to portray several different characters that are not the same as me. And then I also got over singing in front of people. So that was also good. But, yeah, like, I was legit crying at this part. And I was like, yep, yep, this show just keeps making me cry and feel things. Because I don't think I cried during this part in the game. Oh, I did. <laughs> I cried through all the portraits. I, th uh. I think it's really, like, impacted me more because I'm actually, like, watching it happen. 
and I like I have the time to think about it because when I was reading part like th these parts of the the game and the story like I was also like working at the same time so like I have to start and stop a lot but yeah now like actually watching it happen having the time to like pause and reflect it's like making me way more emotional but it was such a good portrait and then like they cut to Bondri and it's like and he's like shocked that's cause Juza's passion came through yeah. he showed him basically like his true self he was vulnerable he did everything right and it was so good but also very sad to learn like his backstory Poor baby boy was a loner. <laughs> so then uh, Izumi's like, so what did you think of all the performances when it's over? And then Bundy's like, you don't need to tell me who won. Like, we all know who won. He acknowledges it finally. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you know, I felt something when he was you know, like doing his portrait. He's like, I feel yeah. the same. I feel the same way right now that I did than I did when he, uh, when we fought the first time and he won. Like, I want to get up to that level and beat him, like, for real. How do I do that? He's finally getting serious and now he finally understands, like, what exactly passion is. Because, right. again, he never experienced that because, he, like, how he's always saying, everything is always easy mode for him. Right, like, he never really has had to work hard for something. He's always just kind of, like, picked it up really easily. Or been told that he's already good at it. So... This is the first time. Yeah. So so then she's like, well, first and foremost, you have to, like, actually give a shit. <laughs> like, you have to actually care and be passionate about it. So you have to get better at doing that. And then she's like, plus, I think if you just tell them the truth, like, they're gonna be like, okay, even Sakyo. <laughs> so then they go back to the dorm, and Sakyo's like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> and he finally apologizes, basically, and acknowledges, like, okay, I was wrong. I shall do better. I'll do better, please forgive me. And he bows to them, and everybody's like, Nani. So he's being sincere for the first time. Right. And Sakyo is, even tells him, like, okay, well, if you're gonna stay, you have to work twice as hard at being the leader and everything. And then he even asks, like, Juza, like, are you okay with that? And Juza's like, yeah. So he has turned a new leaf. Yes. And then Taichi's like, we should all take a bath together, guys. So we can bond. It's so weird, man, to think about that they're all bathing together, but I mean, that's like a normal thing over there. Over here, it's yeah. like, you know, no. <laughs> You've never bathed with your bros? Come on. <laughs> Honestly, like, I feel like that would be kind of fun. Mm. I don't know. I mean, like, you're all just sitting in the water. It's just like being in, sitting and talking in a pool. You just don't have clothes on. So this is like one of the funniest scenes in the fucking game. Because you just see their sprites. Like their character sprites. And they're wearing towels, but like... They're still naked, basically. And it's the funniest thing. It's funny because they're like, oh my god, it's so tight. Like, what? It really so isn't. Tight. I don't know why they're all sitting together on one side. I guess the, the seat doesn't go all the way around. I don't know, but... I don't know. I'm like, it's that weird. looks big enough for five people. It's like a hot tub. It looks big enough, so that's how I was like, that's not what I imagined, because I just right. imagined them being like so, like, basically like skin to skin. Right. But they're not. They're like sitting with, you know, enough space between each other to like sit comfortably. <laughs> but whatever. And then they start like comparing like bodies. Cause Taichi's like, oh, I'm so small compared to everybody. Even That's Yuki, even Yuki, like... even Yuki is like bigger than me apparently. I know. Then Omi's like, being bigger doesn't make it better. And I paused there and I was like, Omi, honey, are you sure? You should be the one saying that. Because I don't know about you, but. <laughs> We shall leave that to your minds. Yeah. 
I mean, he, I mean, come on. He's like the biggest out of all of them. Not in that way, just like proportion one, size. Again, we've talked about how tall he's very tall. They're all buff boys. Yeah, they're they are, but I'm kind of but for me, I'm like Omi is like actually like I can tell that he's like bigger than everybody else. Saki is also very very slim. Yeah, and they're kind of like when they see him, they're like, oh, <laughs> they're speechless. They're like, I've never seen this side they're of they're like before. they're like he's skinnier than what his clothes make him look like. Also, he looks younger without glasses on. He's basically like, do you all want to? Do you all want to die? <laughs> he just embarrassed. Yeah, he's like, this is why I was against like us bathing together. There were several parts where I was like, if I pause it right here, like if someone came in the room, they would probably think I was watching something completely different. Right. But I, I'm not. I'm just watching a regular anime. <laughs> they have bonded in a new level. Yes, their friendship leveled up. But anyway, so, like, towards the end of the episode, you're kind like, they're kind of hinting that something is going on with Tai Chi because, like, the next day, so Juza and, um, Bandri kind of actually are re rehearsing together in the mornings before everybody else gets there. Like, they're actually practicing together. And improving. Yep. And so when everybody else comes in, like, they kind of pause on Tai Chi a little bit, and he's like, oh, I have a missed call, but it doesn't say who it is. And he has, like, a forlorn, saddened look on his face, and is kind of like, hmm, what does that mean? What are they hinting? I love how the anime, we can see, like, Omi's expression, so he's, like, already caught on. Yeah. That something's up. Yeah. Because, like, in the game, they don't really say anything. Right. Like, we don't really get to see, like, Omi's side too much. Other than he's just, like, standing there and be like, hmm, but... I don't think we really saw it too early on, which is why I was surprised later on in the game when stuff is revealed. Anyway, I'll save that for later. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna happen next week, so. Yeah. So, um, I feel like the anime is going real quick. It is. I think it's going by pretty fast. But, I mean, you have to remember, like... They also gotta cover the winter They troops. have to cover the winter troops, so you kind of... And there's only, like... What, gonna be 12 episodes in this half also because spring troop only got like six episodes and summer troop only got like six episodes so we kind of have to resolve everything like in the next two episodes yeah so then we can focus on the winter troop in the seventh episode mm -hmm. so yeah something's going on with Tai Chi and of course Omi can you know, notice it because they're roommates. So, you know, some something is going on. And then we cut to, um, you know, their... Well, then it's the, the credits happen. But then there was stuff after the credits. So then we cut to, like, oh, they're rehearsing. And, you know, everything's going good. And then you, you, they're going to have... They're going to start dress rehearsal, like, the next day. So we're, like, we're already on, like... Hell week, tech week, whatever, because we're finally doing like dress rehearsals, like run throughs. Like, dress rehearsals is when you rehearse with costumes and lights and everything. When you're basically like, you know, rehearsing everything all your cues, light cues, music, props, costumes, blah, 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 whatever. So they're like getting close to opening. And also, we've learned that they've sold out the show. So. There, there's more pressure now because they're also like, well, there's going to be higher expectations for us than there were for the spring and summer troops. So we can't fuck up because then they're also like, those two troops will be like kind of mad. Yeah. Like they're like, we got to make our, would be right, in vain. For nothing. <laughs> we got to, we got to do good so that way we can continue because if they don't do good, then we're fucked. So Yuki runs in and is like, there's a problem. And then we finally see the problem and the costumes have been shredded up. Ripped. There's tears everywhere. It's like... It's like someone was murdered. Basically. Which is bad timing. Right. Because it's 
they're gonna start dress rehearsals. And you kind of need the costumes to do dress rehearsals. <laughs> and even Yuki says, like, it's it's unforgivable whoever did this. Oh, man. I we're in for some wild episodes in the next couple. Yeah, we're gonna have some, some crazy shit happen. So, but I look forward to it. It's gonna be very interesting, very intense, probably very emotional, so... Oh, it is. Y'all, you're, you guys are just gonna have to wait. So it's gonna be fun to see how they animate mm -hmm. all this chaos coming up. All right, all these big like reveals and stuff. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. But get your tissues ready, guys. Especially if you are a Tai Chi Stan, I'm sure. I mean, Tai Chi Stans know what's gonna happen because we're gonna find out what he like is all upset about. They cut out the stupid Kamikichi buns from Yuza. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they show it in the intro. They do. And I just like how they're like, oh my god, he's stuffing those things. Because everyone's like, that part, that part was so funny to me. Because everyone's like, these are fucking disgusting. I guess because they're, I guess, because really, they're really sweet. Really sweet, yeah. And Jojo's just like, eating them like nothing. Yeah. I, I'm very sad about that, you know? <laughs> well, you never know. We still have like two episodes left with the Autumn Troop, so maybe they'll address it or something. <laughs> Not just in the intro, in the OP. Right. Hopefully they'll animate Sakyo with his bubble wrap. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for joining me, Chantal. No problem. It's always fun to talk about A3. I know. It's the most exciting. <laughs> it's like the fun part of my week. Because Mondays are terrible. Oh, man. I mean, they won't be anymore because I put my two weeks in at my job, so haha. <laughs> Go sub to Chantal, and uh, all of our links are in the description. Um, I do apologize. The podcast episode for October is going to come out at some point, hopefully this week. Um, yeah, I couldn't really do anything about it because I was out of town, so... <laughs> I mean, it was for a good reason, so... So I'll get that edited as soon as possible, as fast as possible, so we can have an episode for October. I don't think we've decided what we're doing for November yet, so that shit's still up in the air. I have no clue. Um, we have, we have a playlist of all of our previous uh, videos talking about A3, and of course in the future to come as well. And we've also talked about some other uh, shows that you guys can check out as well. And yeah, subscribe to the podcast, follow the podcast, follow us both on Twitter, and all that other good stuff. So yeah, let us know in the comments what you thought about this episode as well. So have fun, stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye!